It's impossible to argue with someone who believes in the wrong religion. For them, everything is predetermined, fixed, and everything that doesn't fit with their view is cut off, like a heretic whose limbs are sawn off piece by piece. The purpose of this video isn't for me to convince you to hate God, but after it's done, I hope you do. Now, the god to which I refer is a particularly elven one, one Corallon Laurentian, creator of the elves and the protector. Typically, I do not deign to use such terms as good or evil, as they're rather narrow, shallow, and as a drow, I sort of supersede them. However, it is my firm belief that Corallon Laurentian is evil, not chaotic good, as he claims. In this video, I will attempt to describe to you the magnitude of betrayal that the surface elves have undergone following him. For every instance of Corallon's supposed charity, there is evidence to the contrary, and everyone who believes in his so-called mercies seem to miraculously forget them. He approves of those who kill orcs and followers of Loth, like myself. Now, that's not a particularly good thing, to kill innocent followers of the god Loth. Of course, his treatment of Loth is suspect to begin with, but we're not even talking about that right now. We'll get to that. Corallon's pride is one of his greatest downfalls. He's incapable of seeing any opinions besides his own, which is a foolish thing and something that he should already be maligned for. He is very, very prideful. For a baseline of knowledge, Corallon Laurentian is the king of the gods of the elves, or the Seldarin, if you prefer. He was formerly married to Loth, but, after a little marital spat, he cast her into the underworld and married someone else, because he's kind of a man-whore. Now, you might think that that would be the point of this video, but no, he has a very long list of enemies, according to his Wikipedia article. He's very, very, very poor termed with Grumsh, god of orcs mindlessly killing them. Now, I kill orcs all the time, but it's different when he does it. He's a god, and he should have higher standards, I think. While Loth is content to have the drow fight among themselves, Corlan Laurentian allows the elves to fight the drow, as opposed to the elves fighting the elves, as it should be. Now, at least we drow stay in our own lane besides our raids on the surface. Loth is very kind to allow us to murder each other wantonly. She only kills us rarely. And I'm sure you know what that means. I'll pause for a moment to allow that to sink in. I'm not just pausing to jack up the run time of my video for ten minutes. Drow care not for monetization, obviously. I imagine it has set in, though. Corallon also shunned his own child, Veron. Now, Veron, you'd think, would ally with Corallon, because they both hate Loth, unjustly, of course, but they do. But Corallon is so chaotic evil that he cannot see past his own bowstring. A fool. Now, one would imagine Corallon could do something with Veron. Perhaps they could commit a double suicide after the failure of Loth. However, no. They're both still alive. Already showing that they care nothing for their people. Allowing elves to remain as elves instead of becoming beautiful drow is... A curse. Corlon's unjustness is littered throughout his texts and tomes. Obviously, he has a great deal of them, for he's very, very self-centered. And his hypocrisy also 
papers them all over the place. For instance, he favors his similarly chaotic good Elistre, who is an entirely different problem, although he does not like his son or wife, or his grandson. You'd think his grandson would get along, but no, because Corlong can't get along with anyone, naturally. It's impossible for him to cooperate because of the pride he feels. He feels as though he knows better. However, I actually do know better, and he's a fool. He constantly commits errors like this. Unfair to his kin. Unfair to people not of his kin. Favoring the elves over the drow. He allows us to not live on the surface. He forces us to live underground. Of course, I'm not here to prove or disprove Corlon's villainy. What I am trying to accomplish here is to help people see the light of Loth. The light shadow, that is. The dark light? I'll come back to it. We'll circle back around. I'm just trying to help people understand that Corlon is inherently flawed, unlike Loth, who has none. Now, of course, Loth has her complaints as well. But most people who don't know about Loth don't like her. Most people who do, do. You see, the people that dislike Loth have not read her scriptures. And so, the people who haven't spent a thousand years reading the scriptures do not have trustworthy opinions. Whereas Corlon Laurentian is a god where opinion can be claimed of him in a matter of seconds. It's not important to get a background on him. Everything is written right on his face. Loth empowers Drow to take whatever they need from their own society. For instance, more people don't know me, they know my house. And I was lucky and skilled enough to be born the second boy of my house, and then I slaughtered my way into being first boy. Whereas elves will often languish in obscurity in feeble family units, where only their family loves them, and no one else really knows them. For me, everyone in the city kind of knows me, but definitely fears me. Or at least they fear my mother. And it's a much stronger place to put yourself in society. Granted, I am a male living amongst the drow, but it's not really a place of pain. I like, I, I like it. You know, I have to, otherwise I'll get kicked out. Or killed. Sacrificed. Come a drider. You know, I don't have to make a choice about whether or not I like it. I just do. With Corlon, the elves' sense of wanderlust proves that they have to make a choice on whether or not they like their own home. And if they don't, they just get up and leave. Whereas I don't have to make a choice, and I stay here until I'm killed. It's a much more concise way to live. And much, much more efficient, if I must say myself. To speak to the complaints about Drow society is also something that shows that whoever's doing the arguing has led very little knowledge and research towards the pursuit of a society like ours. Drow society is very finely tuned where people are given jobs based on what they're good at, unless they're a man, in which case they do what the women say. It's a meritocracy. It's far better than However, the elves do it, I don't actually know. But I know that it's better. Now, obviously, there's very little argument down here. I know that elves argue all the time, whereas drow just fight. Elves sully the air with words and arguments. But I... <coughs> Excuse me, I coughed. Instead of editing that out of the video, I decided to leave it in. All for the more runtime. <laughs> now, the next part of the video gets a little long, and it's not like I care about having long videos or anything, so I've decided to shorten it. The next few sentences is just boiled down to Corlon bad, Loth good, elves idiots, drow smart. Now, back to the matter at hand. 
Corallon's follower base is also suspect. He allows humans to worship him, not even elves. Whereas Loth's more concerting choice of followers are restricted solely to drow women like herself. She allows them to worship her, and not anyone else. It's a matter of trust. Something that Corlon wouldn't know anything about. He allows anyone to worship him. Even Corlon's very divinity shows his limited powers and mindset. Corlon uses divine creatures, deities, demigods, angels, and the etc. to perform his tasks. Asimar, elves, unicorns, etc. Loth is simultaneously a god and queen of the demon web pits, both a god and a demon. Her versatility is what allows her such power. Her ability to extract help from not only the drow and dryders, but also spiders in their own right. Yoshlul, Dragloths, and many other types of demons and monsters shows her ability to be versatile. Even her divinity's goals. Not only is she a war goddess, but a trickster. Just what the drow need. While the elves do not need the trickstery Corlon at their helm, they require a more firm hand. That their god doesn't give them. Elves are forced to choose, while drow do not have to. Again and again, Corlon fails the elves. Now, I don't believe in objective morality, or really, any morality at all. And that unique position allows me to understand that Corlon is truly evil. The evils of free will are more dangerous than anything else. And that is why I say, even if Corlon Laurentian was good, I could not in good conscience follow him. Loth provides everything I need. And I will be killed if I say anything otherwise. Now. Please donate to my Patreon, or I will starve to death in the streets. <laughs>